So uh, now we're going to go ahead and uh, sharpen some bowl gouges. Uh, I'll kind of go through uh, the setup of this Wolverine system, how I found that it works best for uh, trying to explain it to people. Uh, if you're going to get a bowl gouge from me, it's going to be right around 45 degrees, it's going to be between 43 and 45, somewhere in there. It depends upon how good my eyes are that day when I'm setting up. Uh, and this would be kind of the factor drying that you're going to get from me. This is a 5 8 bowl gouge. You can kind of see the grind that's on there. This was probably sharpened on a 80 grit that I've used for quite a while. I think what I did on this one, I think I sharpened this side with a 180 grit. And I sharpened this side with the 80 grit. I don't know if that will pick up in the camera. But we'll do that a little bit later. I'll show you the different grain lines that you get here. But this is, this is pretty much uh, what you're going to get from me. I have taken the heel off back here a little bit because that takes some of the hollow grind out of it. So when you're turning with it, it's not going to be quite as aggressive when you come, when you come off of this heel. You're not going to get such a rock. It's taken some of the hollow grind out of that, which I think is kind of important, especially for new turners. Uh, it only takes a second to take that off there. So I'm going to show you how we do that also. Now I have a couple gouges here that uh, when I get people that come here, uh, I see this is kind of the messed up things that we got here. If you look at these gouges, you can see that they've ground too long right here on the sides. They've ground too much right in here. So what they've done, they've spent too much time grinding on the sides and they're not enough on the tip. On that particular one there, if you look at this one right here, and see this one I've ground away all the tip in other words the tip is completely gone here so on this particular one spent too much time on the tip here and not enough on the sides and we have this high spot right here and right here right there right there uh, I kind of messed these up yesterday because uh, this is what I see a lot of people bring to me and that's kind of the issues that I see a lot of times. And uh, I'll kind of try to figure out uh, or try to show you how I think you can kind of cure some of that. Uh, when you go to set up the Wolverine Jake here and when you use it, there's about three different settings that you do here. One is the stick out, which I'm going to go ahead and uh, put one of these in here. Which is this, which is the stick out. And we have this setting here, and we have this setting here. Them are the three different settings we have. And what them do, what those do, is they basically set up the angles that you're going to have on your gouges, but they have nothing to do with the shape of what you get on the end. That is all dependent upon the turner the guy that's doing the grinding. That's the guy that's going to make the difference. And what I mean by that is like this gouge right here, I ground too much on the side, not enough on the tip. So that's what it made here. And if you look at this gouge also, I think this is the one to get my glasses on here so I can see a little bit. Yeah, I think it's this one. Yeah, it is this one. If you look at this one right here compared to this one, if I can get these here so we can see these. If you notice here, there's a lot of wood or a lot of metal back here on the heel. A lot of metal back there on the heel. On this one, there's not as much metal back there on the heel. On the setting on this one, this was out too far. So what it done is it ground way too much on the leading edge. This one here was just, just right on. I like to have this edge, this heel gone. Because with this particular gouge right here, to get this to cut, I got to roll way over, just to just apply this edge. Because I, there's no this this all this steel back here on this heel, it's not a good not a good thing at all. All right, so so I'm gonna put this stick out here. Double check that. Okay, and I know for a fact for me that right there about. Right in between that one and that two right there notches. 
that works really well for me. Uh, that's going to give me about a 40 or a 45 on the end there. Uh, and then as far as this dimension here, what I found works really good is about seven and a quarter inches from here to this pocket. If you want to, you can make yourself a little doll like this and just set this right here like this. That'll give you the dimension you want in and out. I can't give you a dimension from here to here because I don't know where you have this spaced out here. I don't know if you have this back farther than what I do or wherever. But if I was to take a center line from there to there, draw a straight line across there, and about seven and a quarter, that's going to give me a real good dimension what I want on the side of this. Okay, so now let's take a gouge that is already set up to the grind that we want. And I'll show you how to duplicate that grind. So this is this is a grind that, okay, we like this grind and we want to keep this grind. Okay, if I put this in here, if I loosen this up, this right here, this 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 thumb screw has nothing too much to do with what's happening on the side of this gouge. This thumb screw has to do with what's happening on the tip right there, from about there to there. Once you get to this point, you're going to start to take over. This is going to be important right here. This is what's going to determine what happens on the side of this gouge. This right here is going to determine what happens on the tip of the gouge from about there to about there. So I'll put some glasses on here. We'll look this over. We're going to go to the side. I'm going to look at that. I'm going to say right about in there somewhere. I'll come around to the tip. And have a look at that. Check that in. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to zero in on this, this particular grind. I've got to come out a little bit. Right about there. Come back to the tip again, have another piece. And that's probably going to be real close to this dimension. You can see right there, that wound up right on that dimension. And this is going to wind up being right between the one and the two notch. So that's how this is going to grind. I'm going to go ahead and grind this one. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to stand here like this and look right at that edge. I'm going to switch hands. Look right at that edge. I can see where I'm grinding. That matched up real close. So now I want to take the heel off. I'm going to stick this little block of wood in there, which is about 5 eighths of an inch. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to make one pass either side. Take the heel off. Now, what I did there is you notice I sharpened one side of a gouge and then the other. Uh, if you want to and if you're good at it, you can go like this. But if you do that a lot of times, and if you get off, if you spend too much time grinding on one spot, you're going to grind the steel away in that. Where I do it half one side, half the other, then I can look and see what I'm doing. So that's why I do it. And uh, that's the advantage I like of being able to take the gouge out of a handle. If I had a gouge like this stuck in here, and I have this like this, Now, this is a lot of weight out here for me to deal with. It's a lot. My, it's in the way. It's kind of, it's just, it's, it's very cumbersome to be out here like this. So, uh, what I recommend is if you have handles where you can remove them, your gouges, I would remove them. And I use these quick change knobs because I can just do this and go to my grinder. Uh, I sharpen mostly freehand when I'm sharpening, but I do use these quick change knobs in my handles. And I do all my turning just like this. Uh, I do leave the other set screw in there. If I'm doing some really hard stuff, then I might tighten up the other set screw. But uh, these aren't on my website yet, but I will put them up there. What they are, are they're aluminum knobs. And I have a 
hardened set screw in here. You have to have a hardened screw in here because you're going against really hard steel. You'll start to uh, you'll start to swell this, and then it'll get caught in your thread. So if you're going to make any of these, be sure you use a really hardened uh, uh, screw in there. But I, I will put these on the website because a lot of people out here that come and are around here and take lessons, or they see me, they do get these from me. Uh, they're 516 8, 18 thread on there, but uh, they're not on there yet. They'll be up there though eventually So, so that's that's why I would like to see people take them out of a handle So so now we got this set up here to make this grind here We're gonna go ahead and regrind this one and hopefully we can get Larry to get a really good shot of what's going on here Wrong one. So we're gonna stay with the same setting We'll see if we can get lined up here. This one here now, this is the one that the tip is ground away, and we got a high spot right there. So that's what we want to get rid of is that high spot. Can you see that? Right. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to have to take a little more off the heel, and we're going to deal with that high spot right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grind right where that high spot is, which is right there. Blend a little bit into that wing. Stay away from that low spot right there. You notice how I went really lightly across that. Now if we look at this, we look at this side now, it looks pretty nice. Especially compared to that side. This is the bad side. This is the good side. That's all we did to fix that. We're going to still have to take more off of that wing yet. I can I can tell just by looking at it because there's a little bit of a high spot right here. But now I'm going to go around and I'm going to fix this side. I haven't really touched that tip yet. You probably can't see it on there, but I haven't really touched that tip yet. I've ground from back here to there. I've ground from there to there. Now you can see this side of the gouge is fixed, and this side of the gouge is fixed. So I've got rid of that high spot. Now what I want to do is I want to blend it all. Switch hands, do the other side. Now we're back to a nice looking grind again. So that's how I fixed it. And what I stated earlier that these, these settings on here just set the angle, but you're in charge of the shape. Who's ever doing the grinding is in charge of the shape. That, that just goes to show out there what I'm talking about. I mean, you're in charge of this shape. You grind too much on the tip or the sides, you're going to have a wreck. Now, if I want these wings longer, what I'm going to do is just go around the side part. Okay, I got that side. Now I have a longer wing on that side. I'm going to put a longer wing on this side. So what I'm doing, I'm just going around this way farther. You can see where I'm grinding, right there towards the back. Right in there. So now I put a longer wing on it. You're in charge of that. I want to take the heel off. Put that in there. Take the heel off. Now what we've got, we've completely changed the profile of that gouge. We went from one that was really hacked up. We've got a nice edge on the side here, nice tip on there, nice edge here, longer wing. That's kind of up to you. If you want a longer wing, uh, it doesn't really matter to me how you want to do that. I'm just showing you what you can do there. Okay, now this one here, this one here is the one where we got all this steel on the back. 
and we've got this big dip in the side right here. So let's see if we can fix that one. Same settings, we're not going to change it. Okay, so what we what we got to do here, we know we got to take a little bit off the tip. So I'm going to take some off the tip because this thing is really pointed. Now, I'm going to grind on this side, but you can probably see better. You're going to see me grind. I'm going to be taking a lot off this heel. See, I'm not even on the leading edge yet. I'm taking steel off the heel. I haven't even got to the leading edge yet. You can see, there's the low spot right there. I haven't grounded that yet. Taking steel off the heel. So I got to shorten this tip to get rid of that low spot. You notice when I went through that low spot, I didn't grind there hardly at all. Right there's the low spot. I backed off the wheel. Now you can see we've kind of straightened that side up. We got rid of the dip that was here. This side's not so good yet. We're going to fix that side. I'm looking right down on this so I can see what's going on. Well, I can see as good as what my eyes are anyway. Taking off the heel, taking off the tip so I can get rid of that low spot. Looking right down on that edge. I'm going to blend that tip to the other side. Now we're back to where we were. Nice looking gouge again. So, that were just some of the things that uh, I wanted to show you that if, if your gouges get hacked up a little bit, kind of how to fix them. And you have to practice this like anything. So there we go. Now we'll get all three of them up here and they should be pretty close to the same. Except we should have a pretty long wing on this one. Now we've kind of brought them all back to where they... Pretty nice looking grinds now. I think any of us could turn with that. Okay, so that's bowl gouge. Now I want to cover another bowl gouge, which is the bottom feeder, which is this, which is a squaring grind on the end, how I would do that. Uh, these two gouges here, these are not on my website. These are what I call long and strong. I have some professional wood turners that want me to make long bowl gouges for them. The reason that they do that, uh, if you're interested in them, you can just contact me. But when you're turning deep bowls, it's kind of nice to have this gouge stick away out of the handle like this. Because when you're coming around the inside of a bowl, then this handle's not in your way, so you can have this sticking out quite a ways. It's kind of nice to go really deep into some bowls. Uh, I have a few of these around here. They're half inch and five eighths. But I, I don't really have, the, they're not listed on my website. So, so this is a bottom feeder grind which is going to look like this. This one here is kind of hacked up. I kind of hacked this one up the other day. The way I do that one <clears throat> is simply like this. We're going to put a double bevel on this. We're going to have a little micro bevel on this. I'm going to look at the end of that. That's about the bevel I want, so I'm going to slide the arm out there. This is, this is a pretty long gouge, but I like to have it out of the handle. So I'm just going to look down on it. Straighten this one out. I'm looking right at the edge. Now we got a nice consistent edge on the front there. Oh, I missed a little bit of it. I definitely want to take the heel off. 
I'm going to use a little bit thicker piece of wood here. This is about three quarters. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stick it in there. I'm going to rotate it again. Now what I've done is I've taken that heel off and I have just a nice little micro bevel here on the end. So that's how I would sharpen the bottom piece. Uh, if you want to check the angles on your gouges, we all have these miter gauges around our shop. Probably come with every tool we got, we don't use them very much. Uh, but if I wanted to check the angle on this gouge right here, this is a pretty handy way of doing it. I just bring this up here and I look at it. Let me get around here a little bit better position, maybe. So I can just bring this gouge right up to here and look at the angle that's on the end of that and look right here and I can see what my angle is. These are a really good way to check that. Kind of fumbling around here a little bit because I'm kind of backwards. But anyway, these are a good little, good little check for this. I'll go ahead and check this one so I can see it. It's right about there. It's right about 40... Forty-five degrees. So anyway, this is a good little check. Y'all, y'all got one of these rounder. You don't have to buy anything that's very expensive. Okay, so now I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna sharpen a gouge freehand, uh, just to show you how I would do that. Uh, this particular block of wood, I do it a little bit different than uh, probably most turners do. I know a lot of people use platforms to do their freehand sharpening. Uh, I wasn't that smart when I started turning, I guess, so I just uh, learned how to sharpen uh, freehand. And the way I did it is basically the same way I did it with the jig there. I swap hands, but basically my hand is my platform. Uh, I'll just go ahead and show you how I would sharpen this one. I basically look at the edge, uh, and I go across it like that. Then I'll take the heel off, I'll switch hands, and I go to the other side, and I sharpen it like that, and I take the heel off. Uh, for me, it's just faster for me. Uh, 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 it, it's not something I would recommend for everybody to do, but... Uh, what I do tell people is, if you want to learn how to sharpen freehand, if uh, if you would go ahead and do this on the jig, and then if you want to take the heel off, just take the heel off freehand like this, and then you'll learn kind of a movement that fits you. Or you can go right on the platform. Uh, there's a lot of people that use a platform. Uh, it's just not for me. Uh, there's a lot of other videos out there that will show you that. So. Okay, so that's bowl guys.